Hi, welcome to another eye health episode on my channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about all you need to know before you or a loved one goes ahead with cataract surgery. Stick around. A cataract is when the supposedly clear natural lens in our eye that helps focus light into our eyes becomes cloudy. There are many reasons that can cause a cataract. It can be congenital, something that you were born with. It can be due to blunt trauma, uncontrolled diabetes, certain medications, and more. But the most common cause of cataracts is due to aging. It's like gray hair. If you live long enough, you will likely have some degree of it. With the ever-increasing life expectancy, I now say to most patients, it is something that you would likely have to consider surgery for within your lifetime. There are three things that prompt me to discuss possible cataract surgery with a patient. Their vision, their symptoms, and their long-term eye health risk. I generally start the conversation of possible cataract surgery when a patient's vision is less than or equal to 20-30. That is, their vision is affected by at least two rows on the eye chart. I remind them that even if we give them the best correction in front of their eyes, the cloudy lens inside their eyes is going to cause their vision to be less than perfect. From my clinical experience, when a patient's vision is affected by at least this amount, there is a more likely chance that they will experience a noticeable improvement in their vision after surgery. But what our expertise tells us is only part of the picture. We also weigh heavily on what the patient feels, which brings us to our next point. After I educate the patient on the presence of the cataracts, I usually give them an option. I ask them if the vision is affecting their day-to-day -day life so much so that they would consider going ahead with the cataract surgery referral, or they feel that it's not affecting their vision too much and they would like to monitor the condition in one year. I give them that option because the cataract does not affect the eye health in any other way other than blurring the vision. So it is really up to the patient to decide if this is something they would like to follow through with at that time. However, there are circumstances where I still give them the option, but I heavily point them towards going ahead with the cataract surgery referral. The following point will discuss that. When a cataract reaches a certain level of denseness, it becomes really difficult for us to look at the back of their eyes to check their general eye health. For better monitoring of a patient's eye health in the long run, we recommend that they consider the surgery. Also, it is best not to wait for a cataract to become too dense before considering surgery because that can complicate the surgery procedure and increase the risk of surgical complications. Once a patient shows interest in going ahead with a cataract surgery referral, I will have a discussion with them about the different lens implant options available to them. The monofocal lens design is to help a patient's vision focus for one distance. Usually this is set so that their vision is focused to view distance. If your natural prescription is a simple farsightedness or nearsightedness, then even the Ontario government covered lens implant may work well to achieve this. But if your prescription includes a significant amount of astigmatism, then you may want to consider upgrading your lens out of pocket to a toric design, which can correct for the astigmatism as well. There's also an aspheric lens option, which can improve quality of vision by increased contrast, definition, and enhanced night vision. 
It is important to remember that even with all the upgrades, the monofocal lens is designed to help a patient's vision focus for one distance, which means they would need correction in order to view intermediate and near distances. For example, you would need to wear glasses in order to use the computer or to see your phone. Let's go through the pros and cons of this design. Pros. I usually say to the patient, if absolute clarity is a priority to you, then this is the lens to go with. Cons. In order to view intermediate and near distances, you would be required to wear glasses. If wearing glasses is not a concern to you, this remains a good option. The trifocal lens design is to provide functional vision for the distance, intermediate, and near. On a day-to-day -day basis, you can expect to have functional vision without the wearing of glasses. Pros of this design. This is an option for the patient in which convenience is the priority. If you would like to do most daily tasks without the need of correction, this is the lens to consider. Cons. The absolute clarity through the trifocal lens design is not as comparable to that of the monofocal lens design. And you would always expect to see some halos around lights while driving at night. This can improve slightly over the first months post-surgery, but expect that it won't entirely go away. Here is a simulation for you to understand that better. It takes about 10-15 minutes per eye, no need of staying overnight at the hospital. You would be locally anesthetized, and aside from feeling a little pressure, most patients report very little discomfort. If required, you would be offered a mild sedative to ease anxiety. Mild eye discomfort for the first couple of days is normal. You would be prescribed an eye drops regimen to help with the recovery process and to prevent infection. It is best to rest more the first few days and to avoid eye rubbing and pressure on eyes. Most can return slowly to their daily activities soon after that. It is generally recommended that one month after both eyes have been operated on to return to your optometrist for a refraction check. That is to see what residual glasses prescription remains and whether correction would be required to bring out the best of the patient's new vision. That should help you understand how to decide whether you should go for cataract surgery or not. And if so, what lens implants may work best for you. After all, this is one chance for you to decide the new way you would see the world. Rewatch this several times if you have to. Take your time, know what you're in for, and know that you've picked what's best for you. If you learned something in today's video, make sure to hit that like button, consider subscribing for more eye health videos, and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss the next video. Until then, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.